Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. Um, hope you're having a wonderful Sunday um, afternoon. I have a wonderful young lady um, that is with me today on the show. I'm very honored. Um, she's very hard to get on the show. Such a busy young lady. Got so many things going on. But she graced me with her presence on the Sherrard Show, and she's a lustrous singer. Um, I've been, had the privilege to, to watch some of her music videos and hear that sultry voice. And uh, she has a story behind that beautiful voice. She's also a Christian woman, and she's doing big, big things. Uh, Heather, welcome to the Sherrard Show. How are you this afternoon? Good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Great to have you on the show. Um, I'm excited because you've been doing some fabulous things, um, and we're going to kind of talk about that for a moment. But before we do, this, um, the Sherrard Show is sponsored by Harold's Chicken. Um, you've got to come by to the Harold's Chicken. The new location, ladies and gentlemen, that is on 6523 Hollywood Boulevard. I'm from Chicago, and Harold's Chicken, this is the first one here. You've got to come and um, check it out. It's the best chicken in the planet to me. You've got to check them out. Okay. Um, now, Heather, you, um, I was watching a particular video. Um, first of all, I didn't, I didn't know you sang gospel. Yes, yes. And, and you sang a beautiful song about Bethlehem. Now, is that how you started in the industry first singing gospel? Technically, no, but that is actually how I started. So growing up, I mean, I grew up in church. My father's in the South, so every time we'd go down South, my grandmother had me in her church singing somebody's hymnal, you know what I mean, some Negro spiritual. And so it definitely shaped who I am as an artist. And then when I moved to L.A., I kind of transitioned more so into secular music, more so popular music, and then the rest is history. But it definitely is where my roots are grounded in, for sure. Now, you, um, you, you, you're singing um, R&B. Um, you have a lot of um, songs that's about relationships and about struggle and things like that. Now, are they personal, or is it just songs you've kind of just written that's catered to anybody, or is that more personal? So everything that I write is very personal. I love sharing my own story with people. I feel like an aspect where I can be relatable or just relate to my fans or the listeners out there. So, um, and love is just very prevalent. I feel like, especially in this world today, a lot of people lack love. And so um, I love talking about the highs and lows, but it's definitely very personal. So um, with that being said, tell us a little bit about your story. Now, um, first of all, you're from East Coast. Yes, sir. You moved to, uh, you can, ladies and gentlemen, you can hear the accent. You can tell she's <laughs> says it all, all day long, but you, you, you moved to California um, to pursue your, your acting in a music career, or is it just music? So I did musical theater when I moved to LA. Um, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm actually here now in Baltimore, be more as we call it. And so when I was 18, I graduated school for the arts in the city, and then I moved to LA to pursue musical theater. And there in college, I joined a group where we did more of the popular, secular, R&B, hip hop kind of genre of music. And then that's really what's shaped me now. And I mean, I've been in LA for 11 years now, so. So, so you moved to LA when you were 15. Um, anyway, moving on. So the thing is that when you, <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is that um, now, who did you get with when you started your career um, as an artist that catapult you now to the success you're enjoying right now? So I've actually been very lucky. When I moved to LA, the college that I went to, um, it has a lot of just, a lot of people went to my college. Um, a lot of alumni are now on Broadway. Jason Derulo went to my college. And so I was blessed to have mentors within the college that really helped shape my career. I was able, within that group in college, we started in college, we were able to sing in front of Capitol Records, almost had a record deal. We were able to perform all throughout Hollywood on the Hallmark Channel. And so just kind of building relationships there, that's then, like you said, what's kind of catapult my my career. And then, you know, I'm 29 now. And so when I grad graduated at 21, and so it's been about eight years of just me kind of doing my own thing. But the roots were definitely grounded within my school. So, so now being a um, young female in the music industry, you hear a lot of horror stories. You hear a lot of things that you have to do to get to where you got to go. That was nothing you ever signed up for in the beginning. But right. now, how were you able to uh, navigate yourself around those things? And what kind of uh, advice would you give to a young, young, young lady like yourself, attractive young lady that's looking to try and set out in the industry? So when I was 23, 27, 22 actually, 
um, I was actually offered to be a part of a group under Atlantic Records where they wanted us to be similar to In Vogue, kind of the new age In Vogue, but they wanted us to be a little bit, you know, more sensual or sexual. And I'm very serious about my Christian faith. And I had to make the decision of whether or not I would turn the deal down or if I would compromise on my convictions. And I remember my grandmother telling me, like, you know, God gave me this talent. And so if I'm not praising God in my music, I still have to somehow bring him glory with what I'm talking about or what I'm saying, what I'm wearing. And so I really had to make that. It was a tough. It wasn't tough. It was hard because it's like my dreams were literally right in front of me. But I knew that God has something so much better for me. So I had to turn it down. So I would say, yes, I mean, literally, I just came out with a project a few weeks ago and it's gotten the buzz of some, some great industry people. But, you know, the, res the initial response that I get from sadly some men in the industry is like, oh, my gosh, I love your look. You're so sexy. And it's like, OK, but let's talk about the music. Let's talk about the talent, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I would say to any young women or any women in general and even some men, too, because it happens to, you know, males as well. Just don't lose your convictions. You know, if you are really if you are strong in your faith, if you have a faith, if you you know, I'm very firm about what you believe in, how you want to be represented as an artist, how you want to be showcased, then hold on to that. If it takes 10 steps longer than if you compromise, it's way worth it. It's totally worth the wait. I can attest to that. You know, um, you know, you're 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 a you're a young lady, but your your um your soul is old. And yeah. it's amazing how um, when I'm looking at your videos, you know, I can enjoy the song without having to see all this skin showing or having to feel all this, you know, seeing all this lusting and all that. It's wonderful to see a wholesome young lady um, being able to do that without having to sell yourself out. So that's beautiful and very encouraging because you don't have a lot of um, older um, musical legends that I've had on the show, uh, such as the Stevie Wonders and the Mel Carters and um, the Emotions and so on and so forth. And the industry, you know, wasn't so kind to women. They had to practically do some of the worst things you can imagine just to be able to get a record deal. And the Bible tells you, um, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So it looks like, it looks like with the smile on your face, uh, Heather, you haven't sold your soul out. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Interesting because a lot of my peers that I went to school with, um, they may seem more successful than than I do, but I will say I've maintained my happiness. You know, I've maintained my peace and my contentment, and that's fine. Like I said, if it takes me 10 years longer than the next person, that's okay. That's God's will. That's my, you know what I mean? That's my life, and that's my plan, and that's my purpose. And when I get to that point, it'll be so much more greater than me just sacrificing my soul. So, yes. Hey Amen. And, and you're you're and you're maintaining your integrity and people will respect that. So that's that's wonderful. Now, um, let's let's switch gears and talk about some of those hit songs of yours. OK. Now, now, one particular song you were singing um, and I will let you talk about it more. But before you talk about that song, um, did you write all your songs or your songs are um, you did? Yes. Okay. All right. So so you wrote your songs and um, there was a beautiful one you that um, of a video and, and it's going to be playing in our caption here where you did it at the Santa Monica Pier. Is that right? <laughs> yes. and, and, and I'm just kind of before the audience, I'm just going to break it down a little bit. It's about, you know, you and a guy and, um, you know, he was you playing with uh, like you playing a different games, holding hands and things like that. And um, it's very, very touching to see that. Um, what was your inspiration behind that song? That is every woman's bittersweet <laughs> you know journey when it comes to relationships so the song you're referring to it's called tell me and mm -hmm. literally like it sounds it's literally just me you know speaking to you know the tell me what's really going, really going on, on. No, no for sure, sure. But, but i need, need to know is it yes, yes or no, no. what you need tell me everything tell me can I be you know tell me is it a yes is it a no you know tell me should I stay or should I go mm -hmm. and um like I said it's bittersweet because I think male we men go through this as well but women specifically when it comes to dating sometimes men cannot be the most um you know clear or concise mm -hmm. and so a lot of the time <laughs> in, the, in the building portion of the, you know, in the building phases of building a relationship, it's hard because 
it's like, does he like me? You know, are we moving forward? Are we not moving forward? You know, what should I do? You know, should I invest my time into this or should I stop and go somewhere else? And so that video specifically, we wanted to do it at Santa Monica to show, like I said, the building, you know, where you go on the first date and it's pink clouds and sunshine, the honeymoon phase, right? You know, you're getting to know each other and you're so happy to be around this person. But in the back of your mind, you're just like, okay, so you like me or, you know, are we doing this? Or are we not? So, mm -hmm. yes. So, so it's, it, you've been through that before. Is that what you're saying? I have, it is based off of a very true experience. <laughs> yes. Um, if now, now, just in the future, um, Heather, I just want to tell you this now. If that happens again, you bring that guy to me so I can slap him. Yes, I'm gonna sir. Slap him. I will backhand him both hands. All right. <laughs> if, he can, yes. if he can't spell out if he like if he likes this beautiful young lady or not, that makes no sense to me. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to the wonderful Heather Harvin. Um, she's a very, very uh, successful artist that's doing great things in the industry. And there's a particular track she, that I really, really like that you've done recently called No More, featuring Chris O. I really love that one because the way that one starts off is everybody's pushing you and pulling you down the on the ground. What's that all about? Okay, so that is actually very spiritual based. Um, so the people surrounding me, that was my sin. So you know what I mean? Like the sin of insecurity, the sin of greed, the sin of lust, the sin of bitterness, unforgiveness. And so we wanted to really make it very dark. And then at the end, when I walk out into the light, just to kind of like the repentance. Right. And so um, that song is very personal because as a even though, you know, Christians, people think that, you know, Christians, we are we don't struggle, right? They're like, oh, oh that's you, you heard all the time. Older than now, but it's like, no, we wrestle with sin too, you know. We have the tools of the Bible to help deal with our sin, to bring us to repentance, but we still go through the same sin that someone else, you know, who may not identify themselves as, as a Christian, you know, they go through. So that video really, I just wanted to really just showcase the spiritual battle, ultimately. That was very good of you to do that because you also had the gentleman, um, Chris, who was uh, Chris O, who was a Christian rapper, and he was doing okay. very well communicating the message. So I really love that about that. And you know, you you raise a very interesting point. People don't realize Christians are we're we're Christians under construction. Yes, we don't, it, we don't have it down pat, and we're not um, we're not perfect. We're just striving for perfection. That's the bottom line to it. Yes. Now, what about the song um, that you were playing? And this is also, you can also see uh, Heather's work um, on YouTube, but also she has a, you have a new album coming out. Is that correct? I did just released. Yes. And, and, and where is it available at? So it's now available on all streaming platforms. So Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Amazon Music, Tidal. Um, and it's also, we have a visual with it as well. That's on my YouTube channel. Yes. Now, are you, are you going to, um, after the COVID-19 thing is over, are you going to go on tour? And here's the thing, I was, like, literally, I had a tour lined up, and then, bam, COVID hit, so. Yeah. yeah. We don't know when it's going to be over, but once it is over, you're going to pick up and not go on tour? Absolutely. You know, um, you're a breath of fresh, fresh air, Heather, and we really appreciate that. Um, you know, I remember in the 80s when um, Whitney Houston first came out, you know, she, her, all her music was nothing but clean. It mm -hmm. was telling a story. You know, for me, I love music that tell a story that I can relate to. And it seems that's what you're doing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to the lovely, again, Heather Harvin. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about her song, That's a Remedy, of Adele. When we come back on the Shiraz Show, we'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard, talking to the lovely uh, Heather Harvin about her career. And if you missed the last segment, she was also speaking about her start, and as well as the things she has upcoming um, in, in the future of music. Now, do you like, I'm going to ask you something, Heather, this may sound crazy, but I have to ask this, because some of the artists that I've had on the show, no matter how successful they were, they still didn't like the music industry. And I found it very strange. But when I asked further and investigated, it was because they didn't like the business of the music industry. They liked what they do, but they didn't like the business. How do you feel about the music industry? I feel very indifferent. I can kind of waver between uh, some days I like it, some days I don't. I think at my core, um, I... I like the old school music industry. So I I would prefer, you know, Motown, the 80s. 
I think nowadays, especially with the way music, popular music is kind of streaming to, um, it's kind of like every man for themselves. You know, it's not, there really isn't much camaraderie. Um, and also the business side, you really have to, you really have to know what it is that you're signing up for. And so I, me personally, I'm an independent artist. You know, I choose not to be signed because I want to be able to control what I say, how I look. Um, you know what I mean? I want to be able to own all of my royalties. Granted, you know, I don't have the biggest budget than somebody who is signed. But I mean, it's like kind of sometimes you just have to it's like making a deal with the devil. I hate to say it like that, but it can be. So I so I understand there are some people that really need, you know, the backing financially of the music industry and it can take your career far. So that's why I said, you know, it's kind of bittersweet because, you know, you have people that really need this you know what i mean but on the flip side it's kind of like well creatively i don't you know i would prefer to kind of just be more independent so 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 being an independent artist um do you have an agent or you the one that book your own gigs and things like that so i actually have a team i do work with the team i have a publicist i also have a producer and a director and we all work together just so we're all on the same page like hey there's this gig you know there's this podcast there's this is that you know are you interested and everybody is you know christian faith-based and so we all are on the same accord of like just certain types of gigs that i'll accept or not accept so yes now one song um, um i'm a big fan of adele and yes. there's a particular song that you've uh you're, you're it's an acoustic song so it's just a guy with a guitar and it's you singing <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that song and what's the title of that song? I uh, so funny. I literally sang that song today in church, virtually, of course, but um, it's called Remedy. probably my favorite Adele song uh she wrote that song when she had her baby had a child just to you know remind her child like you know when the world is so cruel to you um when your heart can make you feel less than or make you feel like a fool just know that I'm your remedy and so I love that song because I feel like especially in this world we need a lot of reminders that you know ultimately God is the remedy he's the ultimate remedy amen amen so amen when I sing it it really is it's very therapeutic and healing for me because Sometimes it is hard being in this industry, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses or trying to, you know, just kind of elevate myself and not really just giving into that to the fear of just insecurities, you know. So um, I, I, we it's funny because uh, somebody approached me when that song first came out, maybe five years ago. I was like, hey, I think you sound good singing this. And I'm like, oh, let me listen to it. And as soon as I heard it, I was just like, oh, my gosh, like this song is so beautiful, it has so much meaning and so much depth to it. And so now it is a part of my set. I literally sing it to this day, literally sing it maybe five hours ago. <laughs> but um, it's a beautiful song. But, you know, you can sing if you can sing an Adele song. That is true. So that thank woman, she is phenomenal. I, I actually had her on the show in, in 2014. And, you know, the thing that's so amazing about her is that. You know, she was always a beautiful woman, but now she's lost all that weight. You can't even recognize her. She is absolutely oh. stunning. You have to pull it up. Um, you'll see the picture on your monitor you are. It's a wonderful thing. Now, what about this song, um, Heather? You said all your songs are about true life experiences. What about this song, Addiction? <laughs> I need to know the contents about what inspired you to write this song. Uh, that's funny. I've actually never shared this publicly, but Addiction, yes. So loud, I can hear it in my sleep What am I to do? I can't keep avoiding you mm -hmm. 24 That too is a spiritual reference That was, I'll be honest, that was when I was really struggling spiritually um, Really wrestling with just a specific sin um, Just trying to find my way out of it um but it was like it just to be honest sometimes it feels it feels good when you sin right it, it does you know tell the so, truth tell the truth 
So I was in a space where I was just like, you know, I didn't want to stop being intent. I didn't. Um, it wasn't sexual immorality. I don't, not that it matters, but um, it was more so of a, like an internal sentence of the heart, um, really just holding on to a lot of bitterness. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of trauma and pain growing up that I had to let go of, but I'll, I'll be honest, in that moment, I wanted to be the victim. You know, I wanted to be angry. I wanted to be mad. And I knew that the Bible was calling me to be not those things, but I just, it was hard for me to let go of them. So I wrote the song Addiction. In a way, it was me trying to plead to God, you know, to help me, you know, get rid of the sin that I was struggling with, you know, really get rid of the bitterness and the pain and the, the unforgiveness. I'm really getting rid of that anger. And, um, spiritual battle. I mean, yeah, it, it definitely, it helped. I will say after writing it and recording it, I felt, I felt hopeful. You know what I mean? Like I felt like God could really help me get over this. You know, um, and, and I'm glad that you're sharing this because millions of people are going to, they need this. You know, oftentimes you see artists on, on, on television and they seem like they're perfect. You can relate to their music, but when you hear the story behind it, it's more touching and you can be able to see that, wow, they're human just like me. And yeah. it's wonderful. And then you, you connect Christianity with that, too, because um, and rightfully so, church folk are guilty of it, because when you come up on Sundays many times, how are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed by the best, ready to stand the test. And, you know, it makes it feel like I'm cursed and lowly regarded. But mm -hmm. it's amazing that um, we, we have these real conversations. And this is from a successful young lady who's doing really big things in the industry. Um, now, I got a couple questions for you. And I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot on something. Um, uh oh. Uh, for two things, it's, it's all in fun, all in fun. Now, um, first thing, question I wanted to ask is that um, now, are you going to be touring in Chicago? Is that one place you're going to be coming on your tour? Yes, actually, that's a great question. I was planning on just doing maybe a California, you know, Pacific <laughs> region coast uh, tour, but um, it's funny, I've actually never been to Chicago before. That's where I'm from. So, and I, I've heard great things about it. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, why not, right? Why not? You know, because um, I think you'll have a humongous fan base there in Chicago. Um, just from your sound, your look, and just what you present. It's going to be so many people that's going to love you there. So I highly recommend that. Um, and then also, once we get past this COVID-19, I want you to perform live on the show. I really want you to do that. I think that'd be awesome. I would now, be now um, let me, let me. Let me test your musical aptitude, all right? You said you like um, you like um, old school music, right? I do, yes. And you say you like Motown and... I do. Name a few you like. So, this is so funny. Literally, every summer, like I said, we'd go to South Carolina. My dad's from there. And he would always play his Motown cassettes. Mm -hmm. And ev literally, every trip, and it always starts off, Whatever I'm with you. <laughs> And then it would go to I'll be there. Four tops, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and my dad, my dad loves David Ruffin, literally. So we would always hear my girl. Um, literally. I personally like Papa was a Rolling Stone, but you know, my dad prefers my girl. Um, from oh my gosh. Well, I need to talk I need to talk to your dad, Heather, and you need to refer him to an episode of the show because um I actually had um, Lou Rawls Jr. and David Ruffin Jr. in my show. Oh. Um, that was uh, over the summer of last year. No, 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 that was uh, in the fall. You had to see that Lou Rawls Jr., David Ruffin. And what was so fascinating about that episode is that David Ruffin Jr. looks and acts just like his dad. I didn't know that off the pictures, but when I saw him in person, he had the thick glasses. He was tall like him. He had the whole personality. You have to see that interview. You'll see. Uh, <laughs> you are you a rapper? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it at that. Yeah. But now, so what is the industry like? And I'll throw it to both of you all now. And the industry back in your dad's day with the Motown and um, records and Sam, you know, being signed with Sam and things, right. and, and things like that. It's quite different. But your dad, I guess, would love it as well. I have to tell him he loves David Ruffin. <laughs> And then also, um, and also it's funny because Barry Gordy's going to be a guest on the show soon as well. So that's that's that's, that's a living legend. All right, don't don't try and run, don't try and weasel out of it now, Heather. I'm still going to get you. Don't even try that. Okay. All right. So now, um, question number one: Who sings this song? You send me, darling. You 
send me. I know that you send me. All right, that's it. I'm not. I'll give you. So I'll give you. Um, wow, you have a beautiful voice. <laughs> I'd sing a little bit, just a little bit. A but little bit. Just a little oh, bit. Oh. Okay, you know what? I I'm just I can't lie. I honestly I don't know. I mean, my first thought was smoky, but I could be way off. No, you're very close. I, I, I'll do the second uh, lyric of it, the second stand. You'll get it now. At first, I thought it was infatuation. But, ooh, it's lasted so long. I'm, like, really blanking. I don't know. Sam Cook. That actually was my yeah. Sam. I literally, was Sam Cook? Yeah. All right. All right. So let's see now. Um, I'm not going to sing this one. I'll just say this. Um, who sings? Um, who sings? Um, um, now there's two versions of this song. Okay. Um, but who sings? Um, say a little prayer for you. Oh, I love that song. The moment I wake up. Oh. Before I put on my makeup. Yes, Dion Warwick. I love her. Okay, and who's the second version? You oh. Sound like the second version of her. Was it it's not Darlene Love, is it? No. no. She just passed away last year. I was about to say, no, she uh... Oh, Aretha Franklin. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. oh, there we go. Very good. Very good. All right, I've got last one for you. Last one for you. Uh -oh. This is not I'm not even gonna tell you a song, but I'll just it's off of Motown. Who was the man that wrote 90% of the songs of Motown? From Martha and the Vandellas to My Girl to the um, I'll Be There. They wrote majority. He wrote, this person wrote majority of the songs. And he worked for Barry Gordy. I'm going to say Smokey Robinson. Bingo. Very good. Very good. Bingo. I love cruising. Oh, my gosh. When that comes on my playlist, I'm like, turn it up. <laughs> I love that song. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, we come back from this last commercial break. I got one special question to ask Heather. And this is for you all. Um, this is a question that they had for you. Um, when we come back right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sherrard Show. I'm your host, Sherrard. If you're missing this interview, you're missing a treat. This is the lovely Heather Harvin, who is doing some big, big things in industry. And I've interviewed many, many guests on the show, but she has to probably be one of the sweetest people you can ever meet and know. And then also, um, she is so, so talented. Now, um, this is from one of the fans that um, saw your music, and they wanted to know, um, how do you keep your, this is from Asia, Asia, from Iowa. She wanted to know, how do you keep your skin looking so clear? <laughs> What's your secret? Uh, my secret is, I worked in skincare for about three years, literally. It's called Skin Laundry. It's amazing. Um, but honestly, um, the, the the key is I actually really don't wear a lot of makeup. If I wear makeup, obviously for photo shoots, video shoots, um, maybe different events, but every day I don't I don't wear makeup. It clogs your pores, you can break out, your skin needs to breathe, you know, your skin needs oxygen. That's how it constantly renews itself. And so um I really my skincare regimen is a little intense. It's not as intense as it was before, but I mean typically I, I just exfoliate at night. Well, let me just start. In the morning, I wake up, and so I wash my face, I cleanse, I tone, and then I put on a moisturizer. Please use SPF, all skin tones, all nationalities. Like, we all need SPF because the sun, even though it is good for your skin to a certain degree, it actually can cause a lot of damage. So, please wear SPF. So, then at night, after you're outside and you get all of that gunk and stuff underneath your pores, I exfoliate every night. I tone with witch hazel. Um, which hazel will really clean your pores. And then um, sometimes I'll use a retinol at night or I use a serum, um, a moisturizer. You can also do like a retinol oil that'll help hydrate, but also, you know, with the retinol, it'll help kind of, you know, regenerate the skin cells, kind of get rid of dead skin cells. And so um, I try to get facials. I'm, I've kind of, I've been slacking obviously with COVID, but you should probably get a facial at least once a month just to really help, you know, extractions we all have i'm sure if you saw my skin of course it was yeah but um facials um and then also to drink a lot of water 
Very good. Audible. All right, I got we got time for one last question. Yes, sir. That was okay. Good. Now this comes from Tim from Seattle. His question is, what does it entail? What does it take a go into when you're making a music video? Oh, yes. I will say, I mean, each music video is different. Um, so this last music video that I came out, well, it's actually a visual because it's six videos put together into one 20 minute video. To deal with my pain and all that's intense. Don't you see I'm damaged? Tell me, can I be? Tell me, can I be? Can I be? Tell me. But I will say, um, typically, I mean, you just, you have to build a, a team. You have to have people around you that will understand you, you as a person, your personality, but will also mess with, mesh with you creatively. And so every music video before, you know, you have pre, you have during, and then you have post. So for pre, pre-prepping um i just get together with the team we'll listen to the song i always like to share what the story of the song you know the story behind the song and so then my director will say well hey you know what i mean like what you know we kind of brainstorm you can um you know do vision boarding storyboarding whatever you need to do to kind of just get create you know create visuals or stills and so then my producer's like okay well let me just you know let me bring that to life um so we have a lot of at least two or three, you know, pre-production meetings. Um, we meet with the videographer, just explain like, here's the song. This is the look that we're going for. Sometimes we'll reference other videos to show like, hey, we want this kind of retro feel or we want this 90s look or this futuristic, you know, look. And so then we also get with the editor before because he needs to be able to understand what the vision is going into it so that way when he edits it, while he's editing the footage, he can remember like, okay, so this is the overarching story. And then obviously we solidify, the producer will solidify locations, um, you know, times, puts together a schedule, the whole shebang. And then we, you know, have production where we film, play around. Um, I'm the type of person where I'm like, let me do multiple shots just because something good might come out of something, you know, that, we were just playing around and we ended up liking it. And so we film and then oh, post production, that's really where the magic happens. It's very tedious. I'm very hands on where I'm like, okay, this shot, this still, this one though, you know, coloring and everything. But um, we just really, we all take notes and we all go back to the notes while we do post production. So, like I said, the editor is involved from the beginning so that way when we do you know put it together it really brings you know our vision to life um i would say a typical just like one video typically i would say with the amount of work from you know pre all the way to post-production i would say minimum a month to six weeks um oh wow because I'm just, I'm very hands-on and, you know, I really just want to make sure that I'm putting something out there that I'm passionate about, but also something that I'm proud of. So. Very good. Uh, very good. Um, now, um, I got two more questions for you then. I got something that's going to blow your mind. You're going to laugh at. All right. No, the, 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 um, wh what I want to know um, from you personally is um, when, where do you see yourself in the next five years with your career? Where do you want to be? question ideally um and this is one of my prayer goals i actually really like songwriting i love songwriting i'm a little bit more passionate about songwriting than actually being an artist myself so i would love five years from now to really be you know um just kind of well known and just really acclimated as a songwriter uh writing for you know pop artists independent artists r&b artists um hip-hop artists i think um, I like the challenge of writing something to someone else's, like, to, to a track or someone else's masterpiece. Like, kind of just 
kind of creating something that's very fun to me. So I would, I would really, I think five years from now, I would love in a perfect world to be a part of a project that would win song of the year for the Grammys for the writing. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, now Heather, do you, um, and, and this has been said and act and told to many people, um, as well as, you know, like for example, with David Ruffin, um, you know, the thing that got him kicked out of the Temptations was that his ego. You know, he got too big for, he thought he, he was bigger than a group and they kicked him out. What's going to keep you humble when you garner, and I know you will, when you get that success like Adele, when you get that success like Beyonce, Alicia Keys, etc. What is the thing that's going to keep you grounded? I'll be honest, uh, the people around me. That's why they say it's very important, you know, for the company that you keep that company corrupts good character, says in the scriptures. Mm. Uh, I have like I'm very picky with who I work with when it comes to my artistry and my music because it is very special to me. But also, I mean, it could go left very quickly. So I, I say the people around me because they're constantly, you know, when we start a project, we pray. You know, when we're on set, we start off pray, we end in prayer. You know, we're praying throughout, um, sharing scriptures. You know, really just, I have people that are holding me accountable. And they've been holding me accountable for the last seven years now. And so um, I would say it's the people around me. Um, they keep me grounded. And also my parents, my mom will let me know real quick. Don't forget, you come from Baltimore, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, Heather, um, everybody has to do this when they're on a show, when they're a singer. Sing a song. <laughs> so I just want you to take a song. It doesn't even have to be from your album, maybe from your album, but something that's going to send us off at a wonderful uh, closure. Now, before you do that, um, Heather, where can your fans be able to keep up with you and see the latest of what's going on with Mrs. Heather Harvin? Yes. So I am on Instagram at Heather Harvin, my first and last name. I'm also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Heather Harvin. You can also find me on Twitter, Spotify, Apple Music, uh, social, uh, Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, on and all. But I would just say Instagram is really where I like to share my life with people. So please follow me on Instagram and please reach out. Some wonderful information on the Instagram. You see a lot of things about you, like you on set with video shoots and, you know, you're doing your music videos and just giving a lot of uh, inspiration to young and old. So keep up the wonderful work that you're doing, young lady. Thanks. We're really so much proud, very much, very proud of you um, on the show. And a lot of times, you know, I have guests on the show that are maybe a little indifferent to um, here or there, but you're a wonderful young lady and we have the connection of Christ together. So that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. All right. That doesn't let you off the hook. <laughs> What? <laughs> All right, Heather, so you can sing a, just a quick verse of uh, one of your favorite songs. Okay. Well, actually, one of my favorite songs, okay, is You Give Good Love by Whitney Houston. I love this song. She's my favorite artist of all time. Rest yeah. in peace, Whitney. So, okay, here's a little snippet. Okay. One, two. I found out what I've been missing. Always on the run I've been looking for someone Now you're here like you've been before And you know just what I need It took some time for me to see that you give good love to me, baby. So good. <laughs> very, very good. Oh, my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. The, this woman can sing, and she's got some great, great things coming up. You don't want to miss her. When this COVID-19 is up, you can be able to uh, see her in a city coming soon to you. Yes. I'm, I'm Sherard. I hope you have a wonderful time. Thank you, Heather, for being a guest on the show and taking your busy time. Be careful on your travels back to Los Angeles. And when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, on our next episode of the Sherrard Show, we're going to have Mr. Lorenz Tate's going to be on the show. You don't want to miss that. Also, we got some very special um, surprises coming up. I'm Sherrard. Hope you have a great day. See you next week.